Sorry for the confusion, but welcome to our first Micromouse lecture. And yeah, one thing. So go ahead, um, so please sign in. I know, like, if you haven't signed in, go ahead and we'll get this started. So yeah, welcome, you guys. Congratulations on getting into Micromouse. We're excited. <laughs> and we are excited to work with you for this year, and we'll. We're excited to see what you guys will bring to the program. So, yeah, just to introduce ourselves, I'm Megan. I am the fire preventer out of the two of us. I'm usually early to things, and I'm just vibing. Uh, yeah, I am the opposite of Megan in everything but height. Um, I'm Nathan. I'm the fire starter. I do not condone lab safety. Um, <laughs> If, you, if you're a music nerd, like uh, music theory, I really like talking about that. You always bring that up to me. And I really want to get good at lock picking. I have a lock picking set, and I've only only um, picked one lock so far. Yeah. Oh yeah, so the survey that you guys filled out on the project applications, I feel like it'd be fun to uh, go over, just look at some of these. Uh, some of them you might not want to read too closely. Uh, you know, that YouTube link. Do you want to see what the YouTube link is real quick? Let me see. You know, we'll do it at the end. We'll do it at the end. We'll do it. Yeah. Like, we'll show you the YouTube link later. Yeah. Like, yeah, so just, yeah, but since I'm the fire safety, like, of the two of us, I will also be the, I will kind of push you on deadlines type person. Yeah, so the thing is, like, for, for you guys to participate in this project, we have a deposit. Like, it's $40. Send it to UCLA IEEE, like, on Venmo. I emailed, in the email that you guys got earlier, like, I have probably written to you guys, like, what format you're what format your payment should take form, and yeah, it's like, the main thing is like, it will be incrementally returned to you once you like, you do our fall rack competition and AMC at the end of the year, so it's like, it's technically free. Got that? Right, so, and then Discord, the main thing is like, this year, most of our announcements, our assignments, and our video recordings, we'll put, it, put them on Discord, so make sure to join the IEEE server and grab the MicroMouse role, because uh, we will be getting, we will be posting our announcements in Micromouse specific channels and not open to the rest of the server. Oh, uh, wait, can you go back one slide? Yeah. Um, one thing that we forgot to mention was the safety trainings that you guys have to do, right? Yeah. Is that on the different same, slide? Or? It's, it's off the very end, but it's like, yeah, I can oh, go over that okay. real quick. So also included in the welcome email that I sent out yesterday, like there are some safety forms that you guys need to finish the trainings for, and I have also I should have included the, I probably have included the link where you guys should submit the PDFs of like proof that you've completed the trainings. We'll verify that and then like you guys could start getting work could start working on the assignments like once you guys have finished all of the training stuff. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't take too long, like Yeah, they're just safety modules that the department makes us make the students do before you guys like do like soldering and do anything where you could potentially hurt yourselves. And for our work session on Saturday, which we'll talk about more later, make sure before you show up you have sent the forty dollars through Venmo. Contact one of us if you don't have Venmo. And then uh, make sure you also have sent in the safety trainings. Yeah. Oh uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So today we're gonna talk about um, just like uh, really quickly. So the first thing that we need to do uh, the power, how we're gonna power our boards, our robots, um, power voltage regulation, how we get like a stable current going for the for the voltage, and then for just safety. Yeah, just in general, we gotta yeah. do that. And software side, we'll be going over, we'll just kind of just introduce you guys to Eagle, which is our main software for PCB design, and then Cube IDE, which is where we do most of our programming for our robots. And um, yeah, we'll go over the syllabus as well, but like, yeah, we can switch it over to that later. So, battery wise, there's a reason why one of us has to be assigned the fire preventer. Well, the main thing is like, Batteries, they're kind of reactive, but you have three main types of batteries, being lead acid batteries. They're heavy, they're bulky, they're cheap, they're easy to charge. <coughs> and then for the nickel metal hydrides, they have a limited lifespan. Their voltages aren't the greatest, and they're still also easy to charge. Lithium ion and lithium polymer batteries, however, are the ones that we're working with. They're very energy dense, they have a lot of form factors, 
and they are expensive, and their charges are paid, and their charges are a bit more complex than other types of batteries. Why do I emphasize fire safety? Well, like in the fallen side, you'll see. Um, but like, yeah, we have <laughs> we're using lipo batteries for this one. We're using um, 1.2 amps for the, we have 1.2 amps in capacity, 3.7 nominal voltage, and a one amp max continuous discharge. And we use two in series to acquire 4.7 volt, volts since our motors need more than six volts to run properly. But yeah. Why is your battery on fire? You may be wondering. So the main thing is like, <coughs> this is what happens um, with LiPo batteries. They're, they're very reactive. This is what happens when you overcharge them. Like, and for your safety, don't stab them. If they look weird, tell us. And like, so we could get you new batteries that probably won't explode on you. You know, like we don't want to set the lab on fire just yet, so. And yeah, some more tips, just use the charger we give you. We will include like one battery charger in your kits when we hand them out on Saturday. And just kind of keep an eye on the voltage because you don't want to ever discharge your battery too much. And just try to charge both at the same time so you could just kind of stably make sure that they both aren't like overly charged or overly discharged. And again, if they look weird, let us know. We'll swap them out and just kind of stop you from setting fires. All right, so yeah, that was batteries and battery safeties. Um, but now we're gonna talk about voltage regulators because, uh, next slide. Uh, when you, when we power them something directly from batteries, the batteries have like a set voltage that they're supposed to output, but it never does that exact voltage because as you discharge the battery, it's gonna like, the voltage it outputs is gonna keep getting lower and lower and lower. So, but when we need to power our robot, we need to like exactly five volts or 3.3 volts, depending on what you're powering. So we need like exact voltage. So how we do that is um, with voltage regulators. Uh, and like, you see that the regular aider, regulator input, um, like we can like be like jumping up and down with our voltage. As long as uh, we have the voltage regulator, it will give a constant voltage output that we will use. Um, and then a main, a main thing that like, Another important thing that makes us need to have this is because like, when we're turning our components on and off, that will cause like, voltage drops from the battery. And then if, if the voltage drops enough, that means that the microcontroller, like the central board, won't have enough voltage to stay on and then it will shut off and all your programs are, are running. That will get stopped and everything will restart. So we need a constant, a constant level of voltage that can't jump up or down, which is why we have the voltage regulator. Uh, so how this specific voltage regulator works, it is a linear regulator. You don't need to know the details of how it works too much, but in case you're curious, I'm just gonna run through it. I guess, think of it basically that like, um, if you have a voltage, like a variable voltage that's like slightly above your target voltage, it will just shave off all of that excess. Uh, and how it does that is it has an op amp, and that, that basically reads the output voltage that it's currently having, and then it, has a feedback loop that will change how much how much current is being let in through the transistor or the MOSFET. And if any of those words did not sound familiar to you, that's fine. You'll learn more about it in your future circuits classes. But yeah, so that's the basics of how a linear regulator works. And that is that one, I forgot the name, but that is what we will be using and what you will be soldering this weekend at the work session or whenever you start working on your project. Uh, and then this is more, um, more information about the specific linear regulator that we are using. Uh, we're, our boards use 3.3 volts and it has a maximum, this voltage regulator has a maximum output of 800 milliamps. Um, and then it's through-hole component. There's the difference between through-hole components and uh, surface mount components, uh, just like how you solder them. Through-holes uh, on your circuit board, it has just holes that you clip through it. You'll see that more. You, all the components that you'll be soldering for, the, for assignment one They'll all be through hole. It's pretty easy to do, and we'll, we'll teach you how to do it. Um, and then, yeah, this is uh, the setup that you have to have when you do a linear voltage regulator. These two capacitors, the basic purpose is just to um, prevent more like uh, higher voltage spikes and voltage drops. Like, if there's a voltage spike, then the capacitor will absorb some extra energy, and if there's a voltage drop, it will output that excess energy. 
yeah. So, I don't know, how, raise, raise of hands, how many people are in CS31 right now? So, okay. yeah, you guys have probably met Smallberg. Yeah, this, that picture only makes sense if you're in CS31 right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, so now we're going to talk a little bit about the software. By the way, I didn't mention this. This is the one and only CS31 teacher, David Smallberg, our god. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, the softwares that we use. It's, oh wait, so sorry. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So basically, um, the boards that we use for MicroMouse, they are SCM32 boards, uh, microcontrollers. And they're, if you've ever used Arduino and Arduino IDE, it's similar concept, except this IDE um, has a lot more functionality <coughs> and is meant for like these SCM32 chips that we are, will be programming. And then what we, will be, what we will be doing for PCB design is using Autodesk Eagle. And I am going to really quickly show you guys what the two of those programs look like and what um, yeah, what you guys will be seeing once you start working on the assignments. Now, come over here. Uh, so yeah, to start off, you have this is SCM32 Cube IDE right here. Uh, by the end, by the end of the project, you will have um, a lot of. Oh, by the end of the project, you'll be like pretty familiar on navigating through this. So like, don't <coughs> worry if this seems like a lot. Like we will have, we'll like help you through the coding process and just getting used to the folders and just how to navigate the software. And um, I guess the main language we code in for this one is with C. And you can see like we have functions, we have just various like, just various function, various functions and stuff we need for our rats and roof, or just our robots in general. Because you guys will be writing your own code, well, partially writing your own code for for spring. Yeah, this, um, I want to emphasize that for this project, you don't need a lot of coding experience. We will walk you guys through the code very slowly. All we require is just like, if you're comfortable with basic programming, like you know what a function is, you know what an array is, you do not need to worry about the coding aspect. We will give you time to absorb and figure it out. Uh, that's the, that's SCM32 cube IDE. And then that's what we do for code. And then what we do for PCB design is Autodesk Eagle, and this is what that looks like. Uh, load. Yeah, so right now what you see is like a schematic, basically kind of showing like the circuitry of what goes into the wrap PCBs we'll be handing out on Saturday. So you, you can see like all the parts and like the wires and just basically how stuff is connected to each other on the board. Yeah, one cool thing, the diagram that I showed you of the linear regulator, this is that diagram recreated in Autodesk Eagle. So uh, basically all you do for the schematic part is you choose which parts that you want, you plop it on, and then you connect the wires by hand or in the software with all the components. And then once you have all of your schematic components set up, uh, you can see we have everything here, then you can transfer it over in the same program to the board layout view. And then here is like basically all the components that we chose in the previous area, like the schematic area, we see those here now. And then we can choose how we want them to connect and where we want them to go. Uh, so I can like, we can move things around, we can move wires, we can move uh, the actual components. And yeah, so over over fall quarter, you will be familiarizing yourself with both of these IDEs. And uh, by winter quarter, you'll know enough about like, using Autodesk Eagle to be able to fully design your own PCB. And then that will be get shipped straight to manufacturing. And then you'll have it by spring quarter. That is our. Um, Because our yeah. next slide is about the syllabus, so we want to. <laughs> I, just, I wanted it to be full screen for this slide. Yeah. So yeah, I'm gonna talk more about logistics again. Sorry about that, but yeah. So project overview, well, like in our, and just like in our kits, I'll be handing out on Saturday. So we'll be giving you like all the components you need. 
you'll need to, you'll get your PCB. You'll get a um, STM32 Nucleo dev board that you guys will be programming. You guys will get your batteries needed to power your robot and then the chargers for it. You'll get two motors and just basically any other part you need to just build your raft or the scorter. Um, yeah, so um, I don't know if you guys actually read through the syllabus because not gonna lie, I do know it's a lot of words, but here's kind of like how our schedule looks like for the rest of the quarter. Like right now we're at one, we're kind of talking about Micromouse Basics. Our ne next week in our next lecture, we'll be talking about motors and encoders, how the motors work, how to control them, how to read the encoders. And then following that, and following that we'll be talking about PID, which is how to control your mouse and how to basically tell it how much to move and how to not, how to just not bump into stuff, how to precisely turn and all that. And then for IR sensors, it's more on like how to navigate through the maze, how to see the walls in the maze, and just kind of going through converting from analog to digital data to kind of write software around that. And lastly, we do have a designs lecture like we have planned for this end of the quarter, which actually will prepare you guys for when you guys start designing your mouse at the, at the start of winter. And yeah, so here's the trainings that we were talking about. So in the syllabus, I've also linked the website where you need to go to access these. Um, if you are a student new to UCLA, there are free trainings you need to do. If you are a student who has previously done this training, like if you have done ops last year or you have done any other project at some other club, like um, you can resubmit your shop, your shop safety and your general chemical safety forms from last year, but you will have to do the uh, lab safety fundamentals refresher. And yeah, please submit all of those into the Google form. I have linked over there. Yeah. Uh, can we get on this? Oh, question? Yeah. <coughs> uh, can you go back to the slide? Uh, the slide with the um, with the lithium battery safety kit. Uh, uh, like we'll release the slides like after this lecture is over, and like hopefully the recording that's happening will also be worth. Yes. You do not. Also, you also do not have to take notes for this. <laughs> yeah. Way. Um. Yeah. You can always go back. We're not quizzing you. This is just like just, just intro knowledge to like give you more context for why we do what we do during the assignments, which you'll see soon. Yeah. Are we are we done with the syllabus? Yeah, we're done with the syllabus. In that case. So yeah, um, what we were gonna do this may or may not work because this is a little bit last minute. But we were gonna try to give you guys like a live demo of how the process of like uploading code, like testing on the on the rat kits would work. So what we're gonna do. Do you want them to stand up and kind of move so they can see? Uh, well, first of all, I'm just gonna be like yeah, like once those. like so. once we demo the software upload part, and then you guys could try to to see our demo. Yeah, I don't know if you guys can see see me over here. I'm kind of in the dark, but just like, hello, hi guys. <laughs> I'm uploading code from my laptop, turning it on, using these ST boards, and they connect directly to pins on our board. Uh, and then we change the code here. take a little bit of time to upload, but then once it is uploaded, uh, this, is, this is a feature that um, you all pro are probably not familiar with if you've worked with Arduino IDE before. Uh, we can set up, in STM32 Cube IDE, we can set up live expressions, so it will, it will tell us the data, like, data value that it's reading, like, in real time. So, you can see here, we have, like, 
front left IR and front right IR values. That's basically how much light is being reflected by these two front LEDs. And so when I put my hand in front of it, the values go way up. And when I take my hand out, the values go way down. That's just because um, a lot more IR light is shining back, so it's reading a lot more. And that is how we actually detect where, all, where our walls are in the maze. And then um, if I can hopefully get this demo working. Dom, if you want to point the camera down towards the maze. Uh, okay, yeah, so um, right now I added uh, the, the dumb code. It Basically, if there's no wall, go forward. If there is a wall and no wall on the left, turn left. If there is a wall and a wall on the left, turn right. So yeah. I will go. Isn't it shaky right now? Okay. Let's try that again. If this doesn't work, I'll tell you what it's supposed to be doing. Yeah, you guys can move closer if you want to see. But basically... Yeah, so it's like, um, this yeah. is one of our, like, not as smart navigation softwares that the case. So the... Mouse switch is, the rest is going to try to kind of like go wherever the, it senses has no path. Technical difficulties are fun. What? Well, what? <laughs> okay, well, how about I tell you guys what it was supposed to do? <laughs> so yeah, um, basically, it was supposed to turn here, go here, go here, here. And then when it comes back, remember how if there if we saw no wall, it goes forward, right? So it would go here and then go forward. And it would never be able to find this path. Right? So then what we do in MicroMouse is we try to uh, we try to we solve it, we upload code like smart code, not machine learning. Um, smart code that will track where where it's gone along the path and then it will not take the same path twice. It will keep trying new paths to get from one side to the other. So, sorry guys, I'm gonna come over here again. <laughs> now, that, that maze solving algorithm that we just did, the, the dumb one, that's called dead reckoning. I'm gonna comment that out and do flood go instead. Because the smart, smart maze solving algorithm that we, we teach here in MicroMouse. It's like you guys will get to learn how to like set up this algorithm in winter, and yeah, that's a little bit something to look forward to. But for fall, you guys will have, we will just only be implementing dead reckoning for now. Yes. So for fast, for getting faster speed and going through the maze, is it mostly done on like software, or like where does the main optimization take place? That's like. The optimization, like, it could just be done with, like, software. This is where PID comes in, like, where you kind of just fine-tune your feedback loop on how much speed to get to the motors. It's like, you could experiment with, like, hardware things, but, it's like, that's a design choice that we will, like, chat with you about if you do want to try it out for your spring design. Yeah, hope that answers your question. All right, so, yeah, now, hopefully, with this new code, it will be smart enough to um, detect that it's already gone along this whole path, and then try going here now. And the I didn't mention this earlier, but its goal is to go from this corner to this corner. Okay. And yeah. So let's try this. Help it out a little bit. Okay. Now. No. Okay. This is awkward. Sorry. Like. <laughs> okay. There you go. And then it turns. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> now it. <laughs> now, <laughs> you guys get the idea. Let's try it first. Yeah. So with this, with that, that will be said. You guys can all sit down. We're done. We're done showing the base. Thank you for standing up, though. Yeah, 
uh, more reminders, again, please do your safety training. You kind of need to do that before you can start on the assignments, especially on the southern part. Um, yeah, so ideally you'll have these done by Saturday or before the work session, before you guys like just meet your teams and like start working on it. We will be having, a, and like the aforementioned work session, yeah, it's this Saturday at the IEEE lab. We're starting 12, we'll be there until like 4 p.m. You guys can just drop in, like, like collab collaborate with your team and just get started on the assignments. And we actually have our next lecture planned for next week. Um, and we'll be talking about motors and encoders. Uh, speaking of meeting your team, you may have noticed on our forum, we did not ask you who you wanted to team with yet. Uh, but planned right after this, we're going to go down to Akupali Lab, get some free pizza, hopefully, if it's here by now. Um, and then I just allow you guys to like, mingle and meet each other. I know a lot, a lot of you are freshmen who might not know that many other EE student, e -E and CE and CS students. So yeah, just like a chance to meet some people, see who you might want to be on a team with. And then after the social today, we're going to um, send out a Google form of like asking who you want to team with, and then or if you missed the social or didn't vibe with anybody, just ask to be randomly matched with a team. Um, and yeah. So. Yeah, any questions? Any more questions? Yeah. Uh, how many members are in the team? Um, three. It's like three people per team. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Uh, sorry, can you say that again? Is there any permission to use the Um. Did the sign in sheet work? Is there UCLA? Oh, just do the UCLA. UCLA, yeah. 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 Should we go back to the sign-in form right Yeah, I can go click back to the sign-in form at the we'll, we'll still be taking questions right now. Sometimes but. using yeah. a very, sometimes a variation of GDOG, but there's no GDOG to see. Yeah, if anybody missed it, you, you do need to be signed into your UCLA email. If it, if it doesn't work, it's not the end of the world. We just need to tell the department how many people showed up today. Um, yeah, any more questions? Well, yeah, okay, all right. That is all the content that we have for today. And now, if you guys want to pack up, we're going to be heading down to the lab to have pizza in a few minutes.